hopefully going live. Okay, here we go. All right, I think it's official. <laughs> okay. I'd like to welcome everybody this evening to the Community Student Art Exhibition. It's the first virtual uh, live exhibition and opening and uh, award ceremony. My name is Carol Myers and I'm uh, the exhibition chair at the Box Factory for the Arts. And we are delighted to have for many years be in strong partnership with Risa and Krasel to really promote the artwork of our students in the Southwest Michigan area. The Box Factory really exists in part to uh, have a place where people can come and see regional artists working, but also to share their work into their galleries. Uh, it's very important as an artist, whether you're a student or whether you're an emerging student or emerging artist or a well-seasoned artist, to have a venue to show your work in a professional setting. Uh, it's while we create as artists in private, we are still um, needing, to, I think, to have the viewer to kind of complete that circle of creation so that you have some place to show your work and get the response from the audience. And I don't think, um, you know, I, I think it's just so important to have student art in particular and to celebrate uh, creativity in all fields and certainly our students and the hard work our teachers do. I don't think any of us imagined when we started uh, putting the elementary school work at the box factory, that we, we would find ourselves in a pandemic where we had to close the doors and no one was able to actually see the work in person. And while we know that the virtual exhibit isn't exactly the same, it still gives an incredible opportunity for artists to share their work and perhaps even to a broader audience because it's not necessarily required that you actually come into the building. So we want to really thank the teachers and Krasel and Risa working with us all to get this up so that we can present it to you. I think when we look back on uh, this time, we're going to notice that when we all were sent home to be safe and shelter at home, the internet was suddenly blossoming with teachers and artists who were bringing work to people while we were isolated physically to still connect, to promote the, uh, the healing and the uh, important aspects of creativity. And in addition to that, I want to talk about my personal um, commitment to having art and especially student art on the internet and in the galleries is to remind everyone that I think some people think that being an artist is like a select few talented people who make big bucks. But reality is that creativity is a human birthright. It's a part of our everyday life. You know, I can say in my career as a nurse that my observation allowed me to pay attention to people and, and observe for things that might be going wrong. I can tell you that in the neonatal intensive care unit, there were nurses who would tell you they were not at all creative, who spent their times making cute signs and, and uh, I, signs on the isolate that healed them in terms of working on that and kind of getting rid of the stress, but also healed the parents and visitors who, who, who could see that their uh, babies were special people. And, you know, even in any uh, other field, creativity is just absolutely perfect. And also it heals and gives a sense of calm to the artist. So I think that it's just incredibly exciting that we get to present these wonderful pieces of work, of artwork and celebrate our student exhibit. 
So next speaking, I'd like to introduce Keith Stevens. He's a Krasil Arts Center teacher, and he'll be talking a little bit about how we're going today. Well, thank you. I'd, I'd like to take this time to thank all of the people who've been involved in making sure that our art show is here and is available to everybody to see. I'd like to thank the teachers for during this time, getting together, getting all the photographs of the students' works and submitting them. I'd like to thank the students for doing the work and doing a great job at presenting their pieces. And last, I'd like to thank the community. This is why we like to demonstrate the talent that's coming out of our schools to show you the type of artwork that our young people are doing. This year, we had judges from around the world, and I can really say that. Uh, because of what was going on, we were able to have judges from Germany and also from here at home. All of our judges are either artists themselves or either instructors of art. Our sponsors are Whirlpool. Whirlpool does a lot for us and helps us get this show on the road. Our next sponsor is Paul and Dorothy Kale. And they also invest both time and money for the art show. We also have Green Bay Packaging. Green Bay supplies the cardboard that we use to hang the uh, pieces at the, box, at the box factory. And we'd like to thank uh, Papaya Chi International Framing Custom framing. He will be framing our first, second, and third place 2D pieces, both for the high school and middle school. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jeff Heaton, an artist, and he represents the Box Factory. Okay. Jeff. Thank you very much, Keith. And uh, uh, one of the things that I, I've been very fortunate to to be part of this show for uh, this is my, my ninth year, I believe, uh, and it's been uh, incredible uh, to see all the work every year and, and get inspired myself by uh, the, 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 the incredible work that uh, comes out of the elementary through high school. And uh, one of the things that makes that work incredible is the excellent art educators that are in Southwest Michigan. So we would like to recognize them in particular. Um, and, and the last few years to do that, we, we've asked them to, to speak at the reception. And this year, uh, we're, we like to add, we, we've asked two teachers, a middle school and high school teacher to, to speak, uh, to kind of represent the art education uh, uh, staff from Southwest Michigan and to give their own uh, kind of personal story and observations about uh, art education, uh, a personal touch. So um, my pleasure to first introduce Scott Morgan. And Scott is a middle school art teacher who teaches at Ringlarder and Eastside Middle School Connections uh, in Niles. So I'm gonna hand it over to Scott and he's our first uh, teacher speaker. There you go, Scott. Hello, everyone. Um, as I said, my name's Scott Morgan. Um, I used to be a graphic designer be before I actually became an art teacher. Um, I do want to say this. Imagine the world without art. I was asked to share the importance of art education and the impact upon the middle school students and their communities. The importance of art education. I hear so many times from students, why do I have to take art? Art is a waste of time. I tell them, imagine the world without art. No creative advertising signs, no pictures in child's books, no logos of your favorite sports teams on your t-shirts, no designer clothes. The world would be very dull and a boring place. Art is everywhere. It's the design on your soda can and the cereal box. It's the graphics of your video game you're currently obsessed with beating. It's on the cover of your favorite book. It's all art and it affects 
all our lives daily. When most people think of art, they think of an artist painting and drawing, but art has so many career paths students can pursue. Many people take for granted about their cars or houses they live in. An automobile designer had to design your car. An architect design your house you live in. There's so many artist careers out there like fashion designer, graphic designer, illustrator, motion graphic designer, tattoo artists, and many more. Art rooms like um, Niles Community Schools are taking um, the 21st century approach to art using technology. Students are swiping out paint brushes uh, for stylists. Um, iPads are becoming the new canvas. With iPads, students can now paint, draw, do digital photography, make videos, and so much more. Here's actually one of my quotes that I had actually one of my students um, wrote. The iPads have really improved my drawing because there are so many tools I can hit a back button to erase something instead of having to rub my eraser all over my paper. His name is Cameron um, Woodbury. When students are able to express creativity, it helps them relieve stress. It's a wonderful outlet. When they are feeling down or, or bothered, um, it can boost their mood. Um, it helps improve students' memory, con concentration skills, develop decision-making, critical thinking skills, enhances communication, listening skills. Um, and it also helps students to improve self-esteem and social skills. Um, Art impacts the community by bringing people together just like we are doing today. Without art, we would not have the means to express our worries, our fears, hopes, dreams, feelings, all to me, our humanity. Art education is able to provide students with a chance to broaden their knowledge and opinions, and most importantly, to give a chance to express these. So I end my speech with, imagine a world without art. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much, Scott. That was uh, an incredible uh, observation, uh, and, and I, I totally can, can agree with everything that you said. It's, it's very sincere. And uh, so now we're going to uh, ask our next speaker, which is Matt Colbert, to speak. And Matt is the uh, St. Joseph High School art teacher, uh, and his, he's been entering uh, our show and other area shows uh, for a number of years, and he's his students always consistently win top honors. Uh, so Matt, we're gonna have you uh, come to us all the way from Colorado here. Take it away, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, when you guys first asked me to, to speak, I was like, what am I gonna speak about? You know, um, and I have very few notes here, so I'm just gonna speak from the heart uh, mainly. I wanted to say, um, I was never going to be an artist. Um, I've been a teacher for 20 years in art and design. Um, I loved art in high school. Um, I played football. I play, I wrestled. I was, I was what they considered a jack. Um, and it was, um, it was kind of funny being in a big high school, like where I was um, and, and, and having my hand in both. Um, I went into, uh, I went to Elma college and uh, my, my, my dad kind of almost matched my, career out for me uh he said uh you know get a get a business degree get something in political science uh i ended up actually kind of joining like the pre-law kind of area and um i realized that wasn't for me because i took one art class in 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 college uh and kind of reintroduced myself to it and then started working with uh kids that uh that needed art in their lives with certain little uh internships and and, 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 and such, um, I realized the art was for me. So then I had to first, then I had to go back to my dad and say, Hey, um, I'm not going to do that. What we talked about. And he's like, what, what, you're not, you're never going to, what, what's art. Why do we need art? Why do we need artists? Um, you know, I, I, I said, we need artists because we need thinkers. Um, and, I became an artist and I became an art teacher and I'll never go back ever again. Um, and that brought me actually to a study. Um, and this is going to be like a teacher right now, but um, 1968 um, in a uh, NASA asked a researcher named George Land uh, to do a study because um, what, what NASA wanted, they needed creative thinkers in space. 
they needed creative thinkers in space. So he had to develop a test for to uh, to to uh, you know see where the creative people are. He developed this test, and he first gave it to five year olds. Ninety eight percent of those five year olds passed the creative test. Ninety eight percent. He gave it to the same kids five years later. Thirty percent of them had passed the test. Five years later, when they're 15, 12 percent of them passed the test. And then the same test was given to 280,000, I'm sorry, 280,000 adults and only 2 percent passed that creative test. What does that say about our society? What that says is we need more divergent thinkers. We need thinkers that can really, really get about the, you know, creative ideas and exploring possible, many possible solutions. We do need convergent thinkers. Those are the people that make the real decisions, the hard decisions. But before that, you need divergent thinkers. Our artists and what our teachers are doing today is we're developing divergent thinkers. We need art in the elementaries. We need art in the middle schools. We need art to actually help students with soft skills. We need artists, artists to create things, a lot like Scott said. And Scott, you stole my thunder on that, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> no, but the truth is, is we need these divergent thinkers because the truth of it is, is that we're living in a new future. And this new future, we don't know what it is. We really don't. And with that new future, we need new thinkers and we need new ways of thinking about things. So I say to my students and I say to you guys out there, um, be that divergent thinker. Think outside that box. I know that's cliche, but at the same time, don't let anybody ever tell you that what you're doing is not the right thing. Don't ever try to fall into that ice cube mold. Don't do it. Follow it. Because the truth is, is that art is the thing, is the method, is the glue between those hard to make decisions. And if NASA is telling you that, it's got to be right. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for all that you guys have done. Thank you for having this show. Thank you for, you know, involving our students in something that they didn't think they'd have an opportunity to do. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I would like to um, give Tanya um, this, this, the stage here from the RISA. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Matt. Um, again, really have loved what both Scott and Matt have said from the art teacher's point of view. Um, it's so critical that we have art teachers in the schools working with students, whether it's in a formal art class or just once a week doing something creative that that they're not um, not able to do. It's so such a great way for them to be able to express um, everything that's going on right now. I know during quarantine, I have a couple of middle schoolers at home with me and we did art just because we had time to, and it was wonderful to sit there and do that. So thank you so much for your words, you guys. That was really meaningful. Um, again, a huge, huge thank you to uh, to the art teachers and students that entered the virtual show this year. We we are so happy that um, that it has come together, and it has been really fun um, going through and looking at all of the pictures of the different artworks submitted. You know, there's there's nothing like seeing it live, but my goodness, um, you guys all did great photography for it too. So it's really been wonderful um, looking through the different pieces and seeing all of the talent that is present in Berrien County. Um, so I'm excited to tell you about the Berrien Risa Awards. Um, and what that is, is it's Berrien Risa's way of honoring all of the artists in all of the schools. Um, in particular, uh, the Risa Award is a $50 scholarship um, students are able to make use of those scholarships and use them to continue practicing their art, um, whether it's through private art lessons, whether it's through um, an art camp offered at Krasl or Box Factory or Buchanan Art Center or any of the other art centers that are available um, in our area. Uh, students are able to use that money to go towards that. Um, some students use it towards art supplies. So um, those students will receive that information um, into July and, um, and they'll be able to, to work with me on, on what they would like to spend that $50 scholarship on. But it was really just one of those opportunities that we wanted to take to, uh, to be 
great partners in the community uh, to work with Krasil and Box in particular, um, and to really reward students that that are excelling in arts and um, help help create more of an opportunity for them to continue to learn and hone in on their craft. So a huge, huge congratulations to all of our winners, um, and especially, of course, our Barry and Risa winners. I'm super excited uh, about that and, and what they might do with that $50 scholarship that they're given. Um, and now I am excited to introduce Emily McKenna. Uh, she's from Krasl and uh, has really done a beautiful job in helping create um, the, the videos and, and presentations you'll see about the show. So Emily, go for it. Thank you, Tanya. I love being able to do this and see if I can really uh, pronounce everyone's names properly. It's one of my favorite challenges. So without any further ado, and really truly you guys, um, I have a really common name and it's kind of one of the things that has always bummed me out. So just, you know, if I mispronounce your name, just know that you really truly are kind of lucky that you have a unique, lovely name. <laughs> so that's, that's my way to positively spin it. And I hope I do a good job. So without any further ado, here are some of the beautiful work from the middle school that were awarded with the RISA Awards. The Arts and Communication Academy in Benton Harbor, Camden White. Barry and Spring's Parent Partnership, Savon Adams. Eastside Connections, Niles, Eva Wright. FC Reed, Gabriel Lockvisius. New Buffalo Middle School, Josette Humphrey. Ring Lardner Middle School in Niles, Jocelyn Maples. Upton Middle School, Isabella Diaz. Water Street Glassworks, Nia Elise Gorman. Waterville Middle School, Susanna Weckworth. <laughs> All right, and now we're we'll going on to the high school RISA winners. So from Benton Harbor High School, Antoine Johnson. Barry and Springs Parent Partnership, Arlie Fitzgerald. Barry and Springs Homeschool Partnership, Miren Allen. Brandywine High School, Gabriella Inman. Bridgman High School, Morgan Granzow. Coloma High School, Abigail Hatenga. Lakeshore High School, Ren Phillips. New Buffalo High School, Sonia Heath. Niles High School, Cree Hurley. St. Joseph High School, Alex Dwell. Water Street Glassworks, Xavier Schramm. And Water Valit High School, Stephanie Cox. So, I want to remind everyone that if you are viewing us on YouTube right now, that the link to view all of the artwork is posted in the chat. So please feel free to, to follow that link and, and go view all of the, the artwork again, because I know I went through that pretty fast. But it's my pleasure to now introduce <laughs> Jeff and Keith back to then introduce the rest of the media awards. Okay, again, I'd like to thank Emily for breaking the ice for us. And if I do mess your name up, just, un just remember that we still think you're a wonderful artist. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start off with the middle school 3D and the third place will go to um, Natalie Van Lente from Waterville. 3D second place. Elzira Kuman from Upton. And first place, 3D, from ACA Fairplane, Camden White. Now we're going to go to 2D. Our 2D third place winner is from Niles Middle School, Eva Wright. Our 2D second place winner, Lillian Shanky from Upton Middle School. And our first place 2D winner is Isabella Alimenti from Upton. 
Now we're going to go to the video awards in middle school. Our third place, I think I may have messed that up. Okay. Our third place winner is Cameron Woodbury from Ring Lardner. Our second place winner is Irie Demps Dempsey from Ring Lardner. And our first place winner in video is Ryona Fry from Ring Lardner. And with that, I will turn it over for Jeff Heaton to introduce the high school. Okay, thank you, Keith. Um, yeah, I, I'll be introducing the high school winners kind of in the same um, order that, that Keith read the, the middle school winners. And since I don't have the names in front of me, uh, so I'll be reading that as soon as they come on screen. So for um, the third place in 3D, we have uh, recycled Tunes by Stephanie Cox, Water Elite High School. And the next one is second place. We have The Hermit by Braden Buskirk, Water Elite High School. And first place for 3D is Blue Gill by Antoine Johnson, Water Street Glassworks, Benton Harbor High School. And then we go to the 2D. So third place in 2D is Cardboard and Charcoal by Harneet Kaur, Waterfleet High School. And 2D second place is Choke on Caution by Tiana Keeler, St. Joseph High School. And first place is The Raven by Gabriella Inman, Brandywine High School. And then we'll do the video awards next. And the third place is Wildfire Coffee Shop by Hayden Flynn, St. Joseph High School. Second place is Waiting by Gabby Blake, Niles High School. And first place is Clowning Around by Sam Atkins, St. Joseph High School. So congratulations to all these great artists and uh, uh, thank you so much for participating. And I'm gonna turn it back to Keith who's gonna talk about the uh, Community uh, KO Awards. So back to you, Keith. Thank you, Jeff. It's my honor to talk about the KO Award. Um, Paul and Dorothy have been a strong supporter of the Community Student Art Show. They financially help us out when we think about what we're going to do for the art show. Plus, they too give an award, a $500 cash award to a deserving young artist. It is in memorial of their daughter, Sarah. Sarah was very active in art and loved art. So they wanted to show their support for their daughter by taking up the mantle and being very active and supportive in the field of art. This year, we have an award given to, now if I'm gonna screw this one up, I hope not, Miran Allen with Lake Effect. And that is the winner of the Kaylin Memoria Sarah Kale Award. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Uh, and I'm just going to jump in here. We had kind of a special situation where we didn't know the winner of this award until it was texted to us uh, after the presentation started. <laughs> but fortunately, <laughs> Mirren did win a RISA Award. So I'm going to go back in the slideshow and just pull up her work for us real quickly. So uh, sorry for the confusion there. <laughs> or I thought I had seen Marin's work. Maybe I'm. I don't think so. You did. You did, Nathan. Okay, I didn't make it up. It's. I have to go far back into the. <laughs> so bear with me, everybody. <laughs> there it is. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations, Marin. Okay, I will. I will continue back to where I was before. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. You're welcome. Thank you for pulling that up. 
Okay, it is my honor at this time to introduce an intern at For the Krazel, and she is a former winner of the Community Student Art Show Exhibition. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Maya Clay. Hi, everyone. My name is Maya Clay. I'm an alumni of the Krasil Art Center. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm an alumni of the Krasil Art Center, and I'm a part of the Keen Art Council Committee. I've been, a, I've been a part of the Krasil Art Center um, for three years now. Uh, with that being said, I sat in the very same seats as some of you guys. You know, the biggest thing I remember was the level, was my level of curiosity and excitement I had going into my first class at Krasil. During the first day of my ceramics class, my imagination ran rapidly. I had big expectations with little knowledge. Once I was introduced to clay, my imaginative world became a reality. Even though I was a beginner, I learned to embrace my imagination, curiosity, and expressions. Art is very important. It is a form of communication, and it's meant to be expressed with imaginative willpower. I am proud to announce the emerging artist that has best embodied this principle. Please give it up for Sonia Heath. From New Buffalo High School, she's looking to attend Savannah College of Art and Design. This award is presented by the Box Factory. And also, if you are a teenage artist that has been involved with Krazzle or you're interested in being involved in Krazzle, we do have an art council committee coming up for the teens very soon. Um, you guys can reach out to the following email that should be shown in just a minute. Um, feel free to reach out to that email if you guys have any questions and you just want to hang out, have fun, and enjoy art. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much, Maya. That was lovely. You're welcome. I'm feeling inspired <laughs> by viewing all of this wonderful artwork. Yeah. Well, I think that I think that's everything that we had in store for everyone today. So thank you all very much thank you to everyone who who came and, and watched the the award ceremony and thank you to everyone who spoke it's much appreciated i feel like we should all clap now yay yay thank you Woo! congratulations winner. great very good goodbye bye <laughs> <laughs>